Providing shade is one way to cool animals out on pasture or on open lots. Shade does not reduce the ambient temperature, but it does reduce the radiant heat gain from the sun. Adequate ventilation in livestock buildings is critical for keeping animals cool. An effective ventilation system will keep the temperature inside the barn stable at just a few degrees above the outside ambient temperatures, within 1 or 2 degrees Celsius or 3 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. The amount of ventilation needed in the barn depends on the number, type, and size of the animals. The ventilation rate is measured in cubic feet per minute, or CFM. This graph shows that the amount of CFM needed in hot weather varies greatly depending on the type of animal, phase of production, and weight of the animal. For example, a sow and litter require a high ventilation rate of 500 CFM, while a 5-pound broiler chicken requires a ventilation rate of only 2 CFM. Another commonly used method to cool animals is to increase the air velocity or air speed moving past them. This helps increase both convective and evaporative cooling. Usually air speeds between 300 and 600 feet per minute are recommended. Increasing airspeed any higher than that will not improve the cooling enough to justify the extra costs of additional fans and energy used. The methods for increasing airspeed depend on where the animals are housed. In naturally ventilated barns or on open lots, circulation fans can create these airspeeds. In tunnel ventilated barns, increasing the ventilation rate will increase the airspeeds. In cross ventilated barns, Baffles are used to restrict the airflow path, which increases the speed of air flowing at the animal's level. Unfortunately, airspeed becomes less effective as a cooling method as ambient temperatures get hotter, as these two graphs show. In the first graph, the ambient temperature outside the swine barn is cooler, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. As the airspeed increases from 100 to 200 to 300 feet per minute and higher, there is a dramatic decrease in the effective environmental temperature, or EET. The EET is a more accurate measurement of the temperature felt by the animals because it takes into account several factors, including humidity and airspeed. In this case, the animals feel a decrease in the EET due to the increased convection. The cooling effect is more dramatic for smaller 44-pound animals than for bigger 220-pound animals because of the smaller animal's ratio of surface area to body mass. In the second scenario, we have a much higher ambient temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. As the graph shows, increasing the airspeed from 0 to nearly 400 feet per minute has a very minimal effect on the effective environmental temperature. The effect is minimal regardless of the size and weight of the animals. Another commonly used cooling method used for swine, beef, and dairy is direct sprinkling. Direct sprinkling enhances evaporation by adding an extra moisture layer that acts like sweat, which removes body heat when the water evaporates from the animal's skin. This method works best in less humid conditions. It's also more effective when combined with increased airspeed over the animals. Sprinklers can be set up on a timer to go on and off in intervals. The dry intervals should allow enough time for evaporation to occur before the next sprinkling interval starts again. This saves water and enhances evaporative cooling. These intervals can be set to change with the ambient temperatures. Other methods to increase evaporative cooling include fine misting systems, or evaporative cooling pads. In both cases, evaporating water removes heat from the air, which lowers the temperature in the barn. This diagram shows how an evaporative cooling pad system works. A fan draws hot, dry air through a water-soaked pad. As the air flows through the moist pad, the water evaporates, taking heat out of the incoming air. Evaporative cooling is more effective in drier climates, where it can reduce temperatures by 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. In more humid climates, the temperature drops are closer to 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. For example, in this table you'll see that, with an ambient temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity of 55%, 
evaporative cooling can only lower the temperature to about 81 degrees. This is still above the thermoneutral zone of most animals. The cooling systems we've just discussed are the most commonly used, but there are new alternative systems being explored. At this point, most of these systems are typically not cost-effective because the gains in animal performance are not enough to offset the cost to install and operate the systems. However, some are producing results that show they may become more cost-effective in the future. So this is a geothermal cooled dough finishing room. Geothermal cooling systems are used to cool the inlet air coming into the barn. In these systems, a water glyco mixture is circulated through a looped piping system in the ground, where the temperature is stable year-round at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. These ground loops can be vertical, going as deep as 300 feet down into the ground, or they can be installed horizontally at around 15 feet deep. These go down about 230 feet into the ground and come back up. So essentially, once you get down to 10, 15 feet, uh, the thermal, the geothermal, tem the, the temperature that, at that level is right around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The cooled fluid is pumped into a heat exchanger coil that is positioned in front of the inlet airstream. All the outside air is drawn in through this large, essentially, radiator heat exchanger, and the cooled uh, uh, fluid that goes down into the wells are inside these pipes and as the air comes through, it cools off. The number of loops or wells in the system is based on the amount of cooling needed. At the sow farm in western Minnesota, the geothermal system uses one well for every three pigs on the gestation farrowing site. About 60 degrees is the temperature of the air that's coming in. These geothermal systems are not only used to cool the warm inlet air during the summer, they can also be used to warm the cold inlet air during the winter. This is because the water coming into the heat exchanger from the ground is at a constant temperature of about 50 degrees Fahrenheit year-round. We can show that there is actually airflow. The costs of installing a geothermal system may be offset by the lower cost of operating the ventilation system or by the reduced need for supplemental heat in cold weather. The costs may also be offset by improved animal performance if heat stress is reduced. I can see the, uh, these gaining some traction, especially for some selected parts of, of production units. I think the cost of these will, will go down, but, but it is an expensive option. And uh, I think we would be looking at paybacks that would be, you know, 15, 20, 30 years or something. Air conditioning is a cooling method that is popular for spaces occupied by humans. But the economics of AC still do not make sense for standard animal production systems because of the need to remove moisture and hazardous gases from the barn. While residential systems recirculate cooled air, animal ventilation systems typically use cooled air only once before it is exhausted in order to remove the moisture and gases. This makes the system much less efficient. Air conditioning has been installed in barns with high-value animals, such as swine, boar studs, or purebred dairy cows, but in general is not cost-effective. Radiant cooling is used in human-occupied buildings, where ceiling beams or walls are cooled in a way that is similar to in-floor heating. The cooler surfaces remove